Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on density, pressure and rates of flow. Now this video is concerned with various things called compound measures. And what I mean by compound measure is when we combine multiple units in a particular quantity, particularly where we're using the word per. So for example, speed is meters per second. It's how many meters you're traveling in each second, or miles per hour, how many miles you're traveling in each hour. Although I deal with um, speed distance time in a separate video. So here we're gonna look at other compound measures. So density, for example, is mass per unit volume. So how much material you have in packed into a particular area. It's something you might have seen in physics. Um, pressure is the amount of force per unit area. We'll see that as well. Um, and then rates of flow is like the amount of flow, like amount of liquid that's poured in, for example, per second or per unit time, might be per hour, etc. Now, before we do these questions, let's look at some of the formulas we might need. Let's first look at density. Now, density, if we just give an example unit, we might have, say, five grams per centimeter cubed. So remember density is just the amount of mass packed in per unit volume. And believe it or not, the unit tells you the formula. That slash you could sort of think of as a fraction. So grams is a unit of mass and centimeters cubed is a unit of volume, like the amount of space in 3D something takes up. So therefore density is mass over volume. So let's write that down. Density is mass over divided by volume. And that unit will always remind you what the formula is. We've also got uh, pressure. So pressure is the amount of force applied per unit area. So for example, if I was to put a pin onto my finger and push it down, it's going to hurt. And the reason is that force I'm applying on the pin is being applied over a very small area, like the end of the pin. So the actual pressure of the pin on my finger is going to be very high. But if I was to press this pen on my finger with the same force as I press the pin, it's not going to hurt at all because that force is being applied over a larger area because this bottom of the pen is a larger area so the pressure will be lower so it doesn't hurt my hand. Now the unit of pressure is often newtons per meter squared. It could be like say five newtons per meter squared. That means you're applying a force of five newtons for each meter squared of area. So that tells us the form for pressure. Pressure is equal to force over area. And this formula will actually be given in an exam if you're required to use it. However, the density formula you won't be. Now we can actually put these in kind of a helpful triangle. It's the same with speed distance time. So do you remember speed was distance over time, which we explored over another video. And do you remember the way we used it is if we say added a line here, that would allow us to find time because we can see that time is distance over speed because the D is above the S. Or if we wanted to find distance, we put a line there. And because he's on the same level, we times them together. So distance would be speed times time. So that's a speed distance time triangle. Then we've also got, if we use these formulas, density is equal to mass over volume. So that means, for example, that density is mass over volume, but volume is mass over density, and mass is density times volume, if I was to add the line here. And then finally, we've got the pressure is equal to force over area. That also means, if I was to add the line here, area is force over pressure. And if I was to add the line here, force is pressure times area, because those are on the same line, so we times them together. Now that's all the formulas we need, so let's actually answer some of these questions now. So, question one. A force of 40 newtons acts on a rectangular area of two centimetres by four centimetres. Determine the pressure. Well, we've got to first consider what unit we want of pressure, but let's say we want to go for newtons per metre squared, in which case, because it's per metre squared, we want to get these in metres. So we need to use this formula here, pressure is force over area. Now the force, let's write it out, the F is 40 newtons, and the area is what's well, a rectangular area, so it's two by four, and we know to find the area of a rectangle, we just times these together. But let's put these in meters, so it's 0.02 meters times by 0.04 meters, and that is equal to 0.0008 
meters squared. So then pressure is just equal to force, 40, divided by area, 0.0008, and that's going to give a very big pressure. It gives you 50,000, and let's give the right unit, it's newtons per meter squared. Right, what about question two? The density of gold is 19.3 grams per centimetre cubed. I did look that up. If I have a cuboid shaped gold bar of 5 centimetres by 20 centimetres by 6 centimetres, what mass of gold do I have? Well, let's first write down what quantities we have. So we're using the density equals mass over volume formula. So we know the density. The density is equal to 19.3 grams per centimetre cubed. Now notice we've got grams here, we've got centimetres cubed, so you want all the units to be consistent, but that's already in the centimetres, these measurements here, so that's great. Now we need the volume as well. So the volume of a cuboid is just width times height times breadth, so the volume is just going to be simply 5 times 20 times 6, and that is 600 centimetres cubed. And that means the mass is, now if we use this triangle here, we want the mass, so we add a line here, and we can see, because those are on the same level, we times them, so mass is density times by volume, 19.3 times by 600, and that gives me 11580, and because that was grams per centimetre cubed, that means we've got grams. Uh, if you want to put that as kilograms, that's going to be 11.58 kilograms. Question three. I mix 300 grams of orange juice of density 1.5 grams per centimetre cubed with 500 grams of lemonade of density 1.2 grams per centimetre cubed. What is the combined density of the mixture? Now, in my speed distance time video, uh, if I had multiple different parts of the journey, then I had a nice little table to sort of summarise um, all the information we had. Now, it's the same if we're sort of mixing multiple things together and we're interested in the sort of overall mass or overall density, etc. So, we do a table. And we've got the orange juice, and we've got the lemonade, and we've got the overall mixture. And then let's look at our three quantities. We've got density, mass, volume. So let's put those in. Density, mass, volume. So the orange juice, we're told we've got a mass of 300 grams. And the density is 1.5 grams per centimetre cubed. Then we've got the lemonade, which is 500 grams in mass, uh, density 1.2. And we want to find the overall density, so this value here. Now, if we mix these two things together, then notice that we could add the masses, because the, the combined mass is just the two added together. And similarly, the volume will just be the combined volume of the two to get the overall volume. So we can just add the masses, we can add the volumes to get the overall mass or volume. Uh, the only thing we can't add is the densities. So let's work out these volumes first. Now, if we use this triangle, we can see that volume is mass over density. So it's 300 divided by 1.5. I should really show working, but that gives you 200. Let's be consistent with the unit. It's centimetres cubed. And do the same here. So the volume is the mass over the density. Volume is mass over density. So 500 over 1.2 is 416.7. Now that allows us to get the overall volume. So if we add that to the 200, we get 616.7 centimetres cubed, and if we add the masses, that's clearly 800 grams in total. So then we can get the overall density, because the density is mass over volume. So overall mass over overall volume, 800 divided by 616.7, and then we get 1.297 uh, unit is grams per centimetres cubed. And let's just underline that to make it clear it's our answer. And that sort of makes sense because the overall density should be somewhere between 1.2 grams per centimetre cubed and 1.5 if we're mixing the two together. Now finally we've got these two questions on rates of flow. And what I mean by rates of flow is uh, the amount of liquid flowing per unit time. So centimetres cubed per second, for example. Question four, I feel a cuboid contain at a rate of 25 centimetres per second, so that's the rate of flow. How long to completely fill the container? 
Now, the first thing we need to do is to find the volume of this container. So, the volume of the container is just uh, width times breadth times height. So we do eight times five times 50, and that is 2,000 centimeters cubed. Now, if you just think about it logically, if we've got 2,000 centimetres cubed to fill, and it fills at a rate of 25 centimetres cubed per second, how do we find the amount of time? Well, we just divide the two. So we need to find out how many 25s go into 2,000. So the time is going to be 2,000 divided by, that will tell us the number of seconds that would have passed, and that gives us 80 seconds. So that's sort of an easier style rates of flow question. Now here's a slightly harder one. So water is poured in a constant rate into this sort of T-shaped container. In nine hours, the water level reaches 45 centimetres from the bottom of the container, so up to here. Determine the time to completely fill the tank. Now this time we're not given the rate of flow, so we need to work out what that rate of flow is first. Because we're told the time and we know the volume, and from that we can work out the rate of flow. So let's work out the volume of water when it's got up to 45 centimetres. Now notice that there's already 30 centimetres at the bottom of this T, so it must fill up an additional 15 centimetres if the overall depth is 45 centimetres. So we've got 30 centimetres here in this cuboid, an additional 15 centimetres here. So let's find the volume first of the water. So the volume of the water is equal to, well, it's the cuboid at the bottom, now, it might be hard to read these numbers, but they, that is 30 times 10 times by 10, and that is 3,000. But we also got this cuboid of water here. So the width here is 40 centimetres. The breadth here is 40 centimetres. And then we've also got to use the depth of the water here to get the height. So we said, well, there's 30 centimetres here, so we've got an additional 15 centimetres like that. And if we find the overall volume, we get 27,000 centimetres cubed. Now we know it's filled up by that in nine hours, so ideally we want to find the rate of flow. How much is filled per hour? If nine hours is 27,000, then in one hour, we just need to divide that by nine, and that's going to be 3,000 centimetres cubed for each hour. Now we want to work out uh, how much time it takes to completely fill the container. So if we found the total volume, we could again, just like the previous question, divide by that 3,000 to work out how much time it takes. So the volume overall, now we already know the volume of that bottom bit, which was 3,000, but we want to add the volume of this top cuboid. So that's 50 times 40 times 40. And if we do that on a calculator, that is 83,000 centimetres cubed. So if you think about it logically, uh, we've got overall 83,000 centimetres cubed to fill, and we know in each hour, per hour, it fills 3,000 centimetres cubed. Then we can just divide these to work out how much time. So the time in hours is going to be 83,000 divided by 3,000, and that gives you 27 point seven hours. Now where these problems can get harder still is um, when there's an unknown length, but they'll give information elsewhere. So it might be, for example, that the height of this top uh, cuboid is unknown, but you are told how much time it takes, for example, for the water to fill to the top. 